Good morning to everybody. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Joe Spall, former chairman of Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust in Bombay and the former chairman of Marmagova Port Trust. Currently, an adjunct professor of maritime studies in the Indian Maritime University at Chennai. When uh, Commodore Uday Rao telephoned to me and invited me to share my perspectives on coastal security, I very politely told him that my core area of competence is commercial shipping and not coastal shipping, and I do not know how much I would be able to contribute to the development of knowledge in, in coastal security. But he replied, my experience having worked in ports, having interacted with the Indian Navy, the Coast Guard, and the local police, you should be able to tell us the steps and the measures to be taken for enhancing the degree of surveillance and patrolling of Indian waters. Friends, please understand, maritime security is not just preventing a terrorist coming to our borders. Maritime security is a much bigger subject. 90% of India's foreign trade passes through seaports and international waters. 70% of its value passes through sea transportation. And there are 12 major ports and 187 non-major ports in India. I asked the Secretary Shipping when I was chairman, I said, sir, who will protect my port? He said, uh, well, you will have to protect your port. <laughs> I said, I can protect my port within the confines of the port. But if there is an attack onto the port from the seaside, who will protect? He said, don't ask too many questions and all that. You know, it's all inconvenient questions. I am finding it difficult to answer. For your information, U.S. Coast Guards protect 361 ports in the U.S. And not only ports, the waterways. Length of it, 150,000 kilometers. What a huge responsibility that they have. Now, Commodore Uday Rao said about big, big ships. The largest container ship that is afloat today is Mediterranean shipping company's MSC Oscar, 19,220,000 boxes could be carried, 20 foot boxes can be carried in that ship. If that ship comes to Indian waters, and if there is a terrorist attack, who will be responsible? India will be responsible because it has entered our waters. It is our responsibility to protect such ships. Friends, even after 69 years of India's independence, maritime security and its value, importance, and relevance has not been understood by our government, unfortunately. It is an area which is so vital for the country's development. 50% of India's GDP is represented in the foreign trade. Foreign trade thus constitute 50% of India's GDP. So important. And the foreign trade passes through sea and shipping. Now, since the time is very short, I will only touch upon five points. One, whether 
we have entrusted the responsibility of coastal security to the right agencies. To my mind, the answer is yes. The Indian Navy, which concentrates in the international waters, the Coast Guard, which concentrates into that 200 nautical mile economic zone minus the 12 nautical miles, and the local state police controlling the territorial waters. This arrangement appears to be reasonably good. Second question, whether these agencies are working adequately and satisfactorily to a level of public expectation that it should work. <coughs> of course, there is disagreement. But one thing, please understand, any human organization cannot work with perfection. There are, of course, deficiencies. One way by which the coastal security arrangement has been brought up by the Coast Guard to have joint operation centers at three places, Cochin, Mumbai, Vishakhapatnam, and Port Blair. I was wondering, a country which has got 7,517 nautical uh, 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 kilometers of coastline, would we be satisfied with only four joint operation centers? We must have joint operation centers in all the coastal maritime states, all the nine maritime states. And not only that, we need to have observation centers in every coastal district as well. Then only this porous coastline could be better protected. This is one area of suggestion which I would give. So that Coast Guard's efforts and its organizational capability could be improved. <coughs> Third question. Is a central marine police force a necessary organizational arrangement for better policing and patrol of India's coastline? Here we must understand there are interstate relations. State government will seriously guard their control. And they would not like, they will fiercely fight against anyone, including the central government, to interfere in the law and order of the state. And quite rightly, it should go to them. Anyone apprehended five kilometers into the territorial waters, brought ashore, he has to be produced in the court, charge sheeted, confined, tried. Only the local police could do. My idea is that having a central police under the central government can unnecessarily lead to center-state conflict, which would not be good for the federal structure of India. Fourth point, coordination. This is what many of our speakers have said. Difficult area. I am a management expert, my management man, who has been a chairman of a port, controlling about 5,000 employees and 300 officers. I have had a lot of interaction with regard to coordination. It is one area where I find human ingenuity has to work with good management technique. How to get over this? Federal Maritime Commission is a commission in the United States, established in 1961 which controls international and domestic shipping in the United States. A very powerful body. When three shipping companies wanted to have an alliance 
and to have an to 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 to, to have a effective control over the freight rates they interfered and said no and nash on the same lines a national maritime commission is established in india which will have the power and the authority it should be a parliament act and they if charged with the responsibility of the entire maritime security of the nation i think with that single command the coordination issues can be sorted out significantly i want to draw your attention to an excellent indian organization we should be proud of central election commission chief chief election commission of india that is one commission which interacts with all the states political parties police and that's a marvelous job when second time george bush was elected when there was so much a confusion to declare the results election commissioner said had it been india we would have declared in 3 days time very well done beautiful coordination example sir finally the, the last file using satellite imagery for watching the entire coast line effectively india is one of the five countries in the world which has mark which has mastered rocket technology both engine as well as launching and we have one satellite for ocean and seas but a constellation of satellites should be needed for proper remote uh, sensing of this area do you know there are there is a constellation of 20 satellites by china along its its coast and china's coastline is 14500 kilometers india's coastline is 7517 kilometers at least 10 a constellation of 10 would be needed for a proper surveillance of india's coastline with these few words i would conclude my speech thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to share my views with this august gathering thank you